The following broadcast is a copyrighted production of 412 Communications. Any non-personal retransmission of this broadcast without the express written consent of 412 Communications is hereby prohibited. Hi friends, a most pleasant good afternoon to you wherever you may be. Welcome into Nickel City Hockey Network's coverage of the UNYCHL Invitational at Elmira. Coming up in just a couple minutes, the Cornell University Big Red off a victory over Quinnipiac yesterday. Takes on the Fairfield University Stags who battled stoutly in defeat to Niagara yesterday. Bringing a 3-1 margin to 3-2 with an extra attacker goal, but ultimately running short of time in their pursuit of the Purple Eagles. James with a right flying solo here from First Arena for the call of this upcoming game. A battle of the Big Red and the Stags. Cornell 10-0-2 on the season. We'll be backstopped today by Matthew Small. On the other side of the red line, we'll see Eric Dillner for the first time this weekend after a terrific performance in net from Andrew Webb yesterday. Keeping the Stags in the hunt the whole way through a fluky goal, ultimately the one that sealed it for Niagara, but a solid team effort the whole way from Coach Mike Silva's Fairfield Stags. Warm-ups working to their conclusion. So we will take you inside the glass for opening introductions. Here from the UNYCHL Invitational at Elmira, all brought to you this weekend by the Elmira Tea and Coffee House, owned and operated by local nonprofit group Capabilities, which has empowered Southern Tier residents with disabilities to achieve their career and educational goals for over 60 years. Visit them at 100 West Water Street, just one block from First Arena, open six to three weekdays and seven to four weekends, and brewing up hockey themed specials all weekend long. Good afternoon, hockey fans, and welcome to First Arena in Elmira, New York, home of the 2022 Upstate New York Collegiate Hockey League Invitational Showcase. This afternoon's 2 o'clock game pits the visiting Cornell University Big Red against the home team, the Fairfield University Stags. Let's meet today's starting lineups. For Cornell, starting in goal, number 30, Matthew Small. On defense, number 26, Joey Padmanabhan. And number 28, Bradley Wang. At forward, number 13, Aiden Cobb. Number 11, Dennis Brown. And number 10, Max Miller. And now the starting lineup for the Fairfield University Stags. In goal, number one, Eric Dillner. On defense, number three, Devin Kelly. And number 24, Jeffrey Matthews. At wing number 11, Brendan Burke. At the other wing, number 19, rather, number 14, Brendan Cullen. And the starting center, number 19, Ned Malalepsi. Fans, at this time, we ask that you please direct your attention to the American flag located behind the Cornell goal as together we honor the United States of America and those who defend this nation with the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light 
what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the And without further ado, friends and fans, it's time to play the game. Cornell clad in white traveling left to right in period number one. Fairfield in their home blacks, red helmets, red and white trim, white numbers on the back, stags diagonally written across the front, moving from right to left. Eagle City Hockey Network coverage of the UNYCHL is presented by Buffalo Golf and Social. Buffalo's best destination for year-round practice and instruction. Simulators, lessons, leagues, great beer and wine selection, also the perfect place to sit and watch golf with others who love the game. Locations in downtown Buffalo and in Orchard Park. We're ready to roll. Here at First Arena, and Devin Kelly floats the puck in up the near boards around to the far corner where it's thrown in by Malalepsi. He sets up a Cullen shot from close range, but this is turned aside by Small. Padmanabhan and Malalepsi converge in the high corner boards, offering aid to Padmanabhan was Brown. He failed to clear. Puck remains deep in the Cornell zone. Padmanabhan to defensive partner Bradley Wang, and this puck is shoveled up the far side, but not out by Brown. Here comes Cobb, working forward up the far side. He takes aim from the high slot. Shot was wide of the far post. Devin Kelly recovers for the Stags, leaving the puck behind to Chris Mangiacopre. This advance by Cullen further off the head man. He puts on the brakes just shy of the blue line and rockets the puck in behind the Cornell zone. Time for a changing of the guard. The Pizza Kelly Mom Rose Spaziante line on now for the Stags. Mom Rome wraps around behind the net, lines up a close range shot. Small hugs the near post, makes the easy save. Spaziante into Mom Rome in close. He couldn't score, but off the rebound, it's jammed in by Michael Pizza Kelly, and the Stags go up early. Complete team effort there, Momro with the steal. And Pizza Kelly with the finishing touch. Took a minute and 26 seconds, minute and 24 seconds rather. For the Stags to light the lamp. They're up one nil early.
Fairfield goal, his first of the game. Scored by number 97, Michael Pizza Kelly. Assisted by number 93, Connor Monro. And number 21, Vincent Spaziante. Time of the goal, one minute, 24 seconds in the first period. Pizza Kelly from Mamro and Spaziante at 124. Quick shot on net. Saved easily by Dillner. Play resumed with Alvarez winning the attacking zone draw at the near circle. Here's Alvarez again coming in, taking aim from the right dot. Another Dillner glove save. Foils him with 17 minutes and 16 seconds to go. In the first period of a 1-0 hockey game, Stags with the advantage. Alvarez setting up Weinstein in the slot this time. He couldn't get a clean shot away. And Jack Brosnahan clears. He ricochets the puck off the far boards, chipped forward by Cam Daly. He's in a foot race with Wang back into the Cornell zone. Support offered by Billy Kidd in close. Shot tipped in that front, covered up by Small for a pause in the action. Malalepsi in for the draw across from Cobb. Malalepsi pursues the puck behind the net. It's swatted by Wiener out the other, out the other side, Brown. Pulls back behind his own goal. Hits Cobb on the breakout pass. And here come the big red, led by Max Miller up ice. Cobb in the far corner absorbs a check. Kelly flips the puck high and out. Here's a two-on-one for Fairfield. Burke takes aim himself. He had time and space at the top of the near circle. This shot covered up by the closed-down knees of Matthew Small for save number five on six total shots faced with 16.23 to go in the first period of a 1-0 hockey game. Stags control the attacking zone draw. Spaziante leaves the puck to Kelly at the point. Kelly opens fire from long range. Rebound chance. Pete to Kelly looking for his second. Crossing over to the far post, Small came up with the save, but there's one from long distance. That puts the Stags up 2-0. Jeffrey Matthews from downtown. On the board, just three minutes and 59 seconds into this hockey game, making it 2 0. Fairfield. Stags wasting absolutely no time. And they're two in front already. Fairfield goal, his first of the game, scored by number 24, Jeffrey Matthews. Assisted by number 97, Michael Pitocelli. And number three, Devin Kelly. Time of the goal, three minutes, 59 seconds. In the first period. Wow. 
Matthews from Pete to Kelly and Kelly at 359. Cornell penalty assessed to number 24, Franklin Berry. Two minutes for interference. Time of the penalty, four minutes, 36 seconds in the first period. Berry, two for interference at 436. Already 10 shots on goal and a hand pass signaled against Cornell. Malalepsy on for the draw across from Cobb and the Stags maintain. Vaughn nearly pickpocketed by Cobb high in the zone. Maintains the puck, good protection from him. And now Cullen throws one through the slot. Kidd rings this behind the goal to Ned Malalepsy again. He's hassled by Padmanabhan. Cobb clears for the big red. And both sides will get some fresh legs on. Half the power, half the power play has gone by. Mark Vaughn working below the goal. It's Spaziante across to Pete Kelly, accelerating up the left dots. He shoots from long range, didn't get the angle he wanted on it. Small deflects that into the backboards. Race for the rebound develops in the far corner. Pete Kelly trying to protect. Harry Aikens lifts his stick. And now Connor Momro maintains the Fairfield momentum. He sets up Manja Capri coming in from the top of the circle near side. Cycled to Lee. Lee kept high by the reaching stick of Dysart. Manja Capri to Momro. Solid puck movement. Momro working high now. The umbrella collapses. Worked in front. Spaziante couldn't redirect on the doorstep. Manja Capri again working the left point. Lines up a shot. Spaziante net front. Won the battle for position. Again, a failed redirect. Sails to the far corner. The power play is no more. And Spaziante checked off the puck at the point by Barry. Lost the zone. Two on two the other way. The Robert Dysart chance from 20 feet was skied into the backboards. Dysart comes down with the rebound. Spaziante strips the puck from him. It's tipped away. Into clear sailing by Markey, and now Pete to Kelly carries it beyond center. He tried to line up a hard wrister into the zone to enable a change behind him. Didn't get the contact he wanted, and he's stuck on. Now he's going to lumber off, and his place is taken by Owen LeCourcier. Meanwhile, Grayson Shaw slaps one in from long range for Cornell. Third big red shot of the game sticked away by Dolner to the far corner. This thrown across ice by Padmanabhan but recovered by LaCourcier. LaCourcier surrounded by Cornell players, two on four. His shot, stick checked off line by Wang from the near dot. This thrown in from the right point after the fact by Kelly, but deflected up into the protective netting and out of play. With 12 minutes and 17 seconds to go, in the first period of a 2-0 Fairfield hockey game. Nickel City Hockey Network coverage brought to you by J.R. Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. To buy or sell or lease any office, industrial, retail, or investment property, trust the unparalleled knowledge and experience of Militello Realty. 716-856-2872 or visit Militello, M-I-L-I-T-E-L-L-O.com. Here's Markey trying to deke past Connor Burke, but lost the puck 15 feet inside the zone. It is cleared. Feel nearly intercepted. Markey recovers just shy of the blue line. He's pushed deeper into his zone by a two-ply forecheck. Both Alvarez and Weinstein offering resistance there. Two on two, Zach Fields shot. Not handled cleanly by Small. He squared up for the save, but his rebound coverage has been subpar. Eight and a half minutes into the first period of a 2-0 Fairfield hockey game. This shot from Daly misses the post. Sprawling to cover the puck was small to deny the rebound chance. Cameron Daly looking for a third Fairfield goal.
Seal on with Brosnahan. And Daly, and this comes back an icing. Picket fences on the time clock, 11-11 to go. Here in the first period. Zach Fiol on for the attacking zone draw. Daly stick handles behind the goal, trying to set up a centering pass, but Akins took away his options with a reaching stick. Vaughn, cross ice off the boards at center to Brosnahan. He shovels the puck beyond the reach of Aldrich and in. Cobb can't backhand it clear. Mark Vaughn protects the point. He steps up with a shot, which made it through traffic, but into the right leg of Small. That one ricochets in behind the goal. 12th Fairfield shot of the game. We're not even halfway through the first period. Here comes Dennis Brown. Backhand squared up for by Dillner for the easy save. And the rebound is pushed back up ice by the Stags. They'll get in a change, or they'll try to anyway but they're ruled guilty of an icing with 10 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first period. Of a 2-0 game. Face-off will come to Dillner's right. Fiol and Dysart to take the draw here. Quick shot in. The rebound chance from Benko sailed wide. Dysart tries to stuff the puck in the near corner of the goal, but Dillner seals it off and holds his ground for save number six on as many shots faced. There's the scrum that developed after the fact. Dysart did win the attacking zone draw at the near side, but out come the Stags after recovering off a failed carom shot. Cullen double teamed on his way up the far dashers, removed from the puck. Wang took it away. And Manjacapre leaves the puck to Cullen. Touch pass from Kidd to Burke up the right wing boards. Burke rims this puck to the near half wall. Where Mangiacopri is set up by Malalepsi again. Long shot. Blocked aside neatly by Small. Burke again bounces one below the goal. Cullen pinned to the boards by Wang. Reaching into offer eight and getting the puck free was Malalepsi. Mangiacopri's shot from the top of the left circle blocked. Padmanabon backhands the puck clear. And it's shoveled by Alex Allen off the boards. Back into the Fairfield zone. Stags in complete control of the terms here 11 minutes in. They lead Cornell 2-0 from First Arena in Elmira, New York. I called the Southern Tier home for three summers, 2014, 15, and 16. Home of the AHL Islanders. Fairfield penalty assessed to number 14, Brendan Cullen. Two minutes for roughing. Time of the penalty, 11 minutes, 10 seconds in the first period. Cullen, two for roughing at 11-10.
Cobb running the gauntlet, lost the zone. Padmanabhan recovers, dropping back to his own line. Pizza Kelly offering the four checking heat. He and Spaziante up a four. Matthews and Kelly holding down the back end of this penalty kill. Pizza Kelly disrupts Cobb with a center ice stick check. Joey Padmanabhan bounces this puck off the near boards. Cross ice feed from Allen. Hits Dysart on the way in. His shot from outside the far circle. Caught and held for a pause in play by Eric Dillner. He's seven for seven in the save department. West Her is the largest automotive dealer group in New York State, selling over 50,000 pre-owned and new cars every year to customers in Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse. West Her Auto, dedicated to absolute excellence in customer service. This puck is skied into the back netting and out with just under eight to go in the period. Luca Mandato taking the face off for Fairfield, but he can't clear the zone. Cobb takes aim from long range. Puck is loose in front, and it's popped in off the rebound. A power play goal for the Big Red. Put them back within one. We'll get another look at it here. Cobb threw one in from long range. Robert Dysart. Was the one on the doorstep to finish 12-12 into the first period. And bring his big red back within a goal. We'll get the particulars from downstairs here momentarily and send them your way. <laughs> Cornell University goal, his first of the game scored by number eight, Robert Dysart. Assisted by number 13, Aiden Cobb. And number 19, Alex Allen. Time of the power play goal, 12 minutes, 12 seconds in the first period. Dysart from Cobb and Allen at 12-12, a power play goal. Chris Mangiacopre waits behind his own net. Plays the puck to Burke up the far side, but the four checking heat from the Big Red, now that the momentum's in their favor, remains pretty intense. Burke sends the puck up the far board. Zach Lee tips it in over the Cornell line. Partial changing of the guard for the Stags. Meanwhile, Bement throws this puck to Tamara Rabin up the near side. She shoots from long range, sprawling to cover the puck was Dillner, but to no avail. And it was cleared out from behind him. He had some help from his decor there to keep this a 2-1 game. Delayed offside on Cornell. They re-enter. Absorbing a check was Weinstein sending this puck deep into the Fairfield zone. Tamara Rabin works this up the far boards. Couldn't quite connect with Padmanabhan at the point as Malalepsi takes the puck away and works it through neutral territory. In comes Cullen missing a glove. The lines person got the worst of that check from Akins. Cullen makes his way back to the bench. Short a glove, both sides changing. And Billy Kidd's breakout nearly intercepted by Miller for Cornell. Does make it through into the big red zone. Centering pass nearly was intercepted by Cobb, but not cleared. Daly turned a shot attempt in from close range, but off its intended line. Wiener chips the puck beyond Daly's reach. Cobb after gaining center. 
Feeds it on further to Max Miller. Cobb taking aim from between the hash marks. His shot cleared the crossbar, rang off the back glass. I don't know. That looked onside to me. It appeared as though Aikens had held center point cleanly, but this is going to come back offside. The lines person ruling there was daylight between. The puck in the far edge of the blue line. 4.47 to go in the first period. And play restarted just above the Stags line. This will be an icing. UNYCHL coverage on the Nickel City Hockey Network brought to you by the Battaglia Marciano Agency, an independent agent for auto, homeowners, commercial, and life insurance. The Battaglia Marciano Agency, providing peace of mind for Western New Yorkers for over 35 years. You can reach them via phone at 716-675-5700. Another quick shot, another quick save. Faceoff comes to the left of Dillner. And the Stags clear. Momro pinches beyond Burke. Shot came in from the corner off the stick of Pete to Kelly. Right into Small's leg pad. Kelly tries to prolong the momentum from the point. The opposite D-man, Matthews, protects, throws a puck in lazily, covered again by Small for a pause in play with 4.06 to go in the first period. A 2-1 score, Fairfield's lead was cut in half by the power play goal from Dysart. Face off to Small's left. Matthews in for the face-off and a quick goal. Vincent Spaziante crashes the net and connects. It was Spaziante walking forward all the way right off the draw. to make this a 3-1 hockey game. We misidentified him as Matthews on the faceoff, but that was Vinny the whole way, right from the circle, into the blue paint, to re-extend the Fairfield lead to two. Fairfield goal, his first of the game. Scored by number 21, Vincent Spaziante. Time of the unassisted goal, 15 minutes, 57 seconds in the first period. Spaziante unassisted at 15, 57. Miller's shot at the opposite end, turned aside by Dillner. He saved 10 of 11. The centering pass from Mandato intended for LaCourcier was intercepted. Markey clears the zone. He gets some help astern from Zach Lee, pushing play then from blue line to blue line after taking over the momentum. And Aikens carries the puck the other way out of Cornell territory. Recovered by Malalepsi behind his own goal. He's slowed up by an open ice hit from Kratzios. Puck lay loose in the high slot. Back on his feet. Here comes Ned Malalepsi, two on one. Centering pass. The net front tip from Burke was denied. We've got to get another look at that one. 
a solid save from Small, and we'll bring that to you at the next stoppage. Dillner holds on the other side for a pause after a crowd surrounds him with just over two minutes to go in the first period in Fairfield up 3-1. So here's the mini two-on-one headed by Malalepsi. Cutting for the net was Burke. But Small read that play beautifully and was able to deny the redirect chance. Billy Kidd to Daly, to Brosnahan accelerating up the middle and in, but he's outmanned as he enters the Cornell zone. Daly double team below the cage, trying to corral the puck, gives it away. Barry advances to Allen, and he flips the puck in to the far corner. It rolls behind the cage. Allen centers. The shot on the doorstep came from Benko. 13th Cornell shot blocked by Dillner. Shots quite high so far, but the pace of the game has dictated it. 18-13, advantage Fairfield. Spaziante looking for another, was bothered in his chance, in from the bottom of the circle. This one made it through, but it was blocked on the doorstep. Vaughn denied at the top of the paint by Dysart. One minute remaining in the period. In minute restant dans la période. Pete to Kelly's stick candles. He's bothered high in the zone. First, Allen reaching in to challenge him, and then Barry secondly. This puck floated by Allen in behind the Fairfield goal after gaining center. And this will be called an icing. Stags trying to catch Cornell in the midst of a change, but the stretch pass up the near boards. Goes all the way in for an icing. With 35 seconds to go in the first period. Face off coming to Dillner's right. Cobb and Spaziante meet in the far circle. In the midst of a battle in the near corner, this puck is launched by Pete Kelly up ice. Mom wrote to Spaziante, two on two. Spaziante kept wide by Pad Monobon. Spaziante tries to push play up the far wall. It's held in by Matthews at the point, but he gives the puck away to Cobb. Final six seconds of the first period. Last shot, a two-on-one. Winding up was Miller, but a stick check from Kelly denies him. And the kitchen timer sounds to signal the end of the first period. The score through one period. Fairfield Stags, three. Cornell Big Red, one. We'll be back on the Nickel City Hockey Network after the intermission.
Time for the second period. Let's head back upstairs to James Witherite. Thank you, Norm Borg. Welcome back into First Arena in Elmira, New York, home of the UNYCHL Invitational coverage from the Nickel City Hockey Network, brought to you by our event sponsor, the Elmira Tea and Coffee House. Owned and operated by a local nonprofit group Capabilities, which has empowered Southern Tier residents with disabilities to achieve their career and educational goals for over 60 years. Visit the Elmira Tea and Coffee House at 100 West Water Street in Elmira, just one block from First Arena. Open Monday through Friday, 6 to 3, and Saturday, Sunday, 7 to 4, and brewing up hockey themed specials all weekend long. Nickel City Hockey Network coverage of the UNYCHL is presented by Buffalo Golf and Social, Western New York's leading indoor golf facility. Simulators, lessons, leagues, Buffalo Golf and Social is the area's best destination for year-round practice and instruction with locations both downtown and in Orchard Park. Second period ready to roll with Cornell on the power play to start the second period as Devin Kelly was issued an interference minor at 20 minutes on the first period. Cross ice pass from Dysart hits Kopp. He lost the puck in the fresh ice at the point. Markey pounces, tries to clear the zone. Luca Mandato pushes play back into the Cornell end and keeps the four checking heat on Padmanabon. Man down, it was Dennis Brown who was bodied into the backboards by Saxton for Fairfield. Manchikopre swats this back the other way. Cullen runs into the stanchion at the base of his own bench, absorbing a Brown check on his way back into the big red zone. Half the penalty to Kelly is expired. Slap shot from Saxton was blocked as soon as he got rid of it at the top of the far circle. This is shoveled back by Small.
Friedberg stick handles to get past Spaziante and clear his own zone. He kept his momentum going, but Lucrazios lost his footing, fell over the blue line, and this will be called back offside. Faceoff will be directly in front of the first arena press box. With a minute and a half gone in the second period. Stags up 3-1, down a man for another 20 seconds clear. Bradley Wang waits behind his own goal. Miller looked past but carried the puck up to his own blue line before headmanning it to Friedberg. This nearly slapped out. by the Stags defender, but Friedberg turned a quick shot back in. First Cornell shot of the period. Eric Dillner came up with the save. Spaziante and Alvarez took the draw. Michael Pete to Kelly. On his horse, two on two. Momrose out of the box. It was Kelly back on D. That penalty was assessed to Momro. We saw three upstairs when we officially got word at 20 minutes in the first period, but that penalty was on Momro, not Kelly, as previously reported. And we apologize for that, for that error in transmission. Scoring correction, the Fairfield penalty at 20 minutes in the first period was assessed to number 93, Connor Momro. Again, that two minutes for interference. Fiol and Alvarez meet at the near circle, a pair of, or the far circle rather, in the Fairfield zone, pair of bottom six forwards, and the Stags lumber forward again. Quick shot from Brosnahan. Caught and held by Small for save number 17 on 20 total shots faced thus far, and we're only two and a half minutes into the second period of a 3-1 hockey game. Fairfield controlling the pace of this game pretty well outright. Centering pass, Daly fans on the puck after a beautiful setup from Vaughn. Brown pounces, drives play the other way. Vaughn tries to angle him away from the vulcanized rubber directly below the goal. Brown stays with it. Vaughn can't carry him it clear. It's held in at the half wall off the skate of Aikens. Taking aim from the left point was Bradley Wang. To no avail, another key save coming from Dillner. Faceoff will stay at the near circle as both teams change. Mandato and Cobb squaring off. Big mismatch there. Cornell with the stronger center, but overall, the Stags maintaining from top to bottom the upper hand in terms of momentum and puck movement from the team perspective. Manja Capre let the puck sail up the middle. It was fanned on over the center logo by Burke. Enough to nullify the icing. Allen left the puck to the accelerating Joey Padmanabon. He was angled to the far corner, stripped of the puck. Mandato sends this across ice. Markey couldn't reel the puck in. And the backhand of Bradley Wang at his own goal line. Turns the momentum from right to left only for a fleeting moment before Markey took it away just inside the Cornell blue line. Padmanabon. Can't get past Manja Capre holding the left point to Le Corsier. Padmanabon swings a stick at him. Padmanabon with some help, but Le Corsier ran the gauntlet cleanly. Lee's shot from 15 feet was blocked. It comes back to Manja Capre, now centered by Malalepsi. This barely held in by the Stags. 
But Wang bounces a puck across ice. We're off the far boards. Alex Allen turns and bats it back into the Fairfield zone, leading to a high shot by Dysart, which cleared the Fairfield crossbar. Burke the other way. Challenge from a stern Cullen off what ultimately had the effect of a drop pass. Cullen's shot held on to by Small. It was Tamara Rabin offering the defensive pressure for Cornell. Face-off coming to Small's right. This shot skied high. Burke off the draw. Weinstein tries to clear out the slot, but Kelly held the point. Kelly and Matthews will race down the puck. Rabin and Weinstein, the two pursuers for the Big Red. Rabin... Checked off her feet by Burke. Both of them pop up. And in the near corner, Julian Bemmett tries to maintain momentum for the Big Red in the attack. But to no avail, Cullen finds Burke up the left wall. Two on O oh, becomes a two on one. The centering pass to Malalepsi intercepted by Wiener. And a slash is signaled with five minutes, 28 seconds gone in the second period. It's gonna go against At the near circle. And Dysart's in for the draw for the Big Red. Fairfield penalty assessed to number 14, Brendan Cullen. Two minutes for slashing. Time of the penalty, five minutes, 28 seconds in the second period. Cullen, two for slashing at 5.28. Off a quick shot, Spaziante puts one in off the draw. Shorthanded goal, his second coming in from the faceoff. And it's now 4-1, Fairfield. Spaziante through traffic, deflected that off Cobb's stick, it looked like. Vinny Spaziante gets himself a shorty. Here he's looking for the hat trick, charging in. But he was slowed up by Miller. And a dislodged net gives us a stoppage in play. This face-off comes to the right of Small. Shot from Mangiacopre at the point was blocked. Markey works the puck up the far side. And he recovers in the neutral zone, too, after a failed Cornell breakout. Fairfield goal, his second of the game. Scored by number 21, Vincent Spaziante. Time of the shorthanded goal, 5 minutes, 45 seconds in the second period. Spaziante unassisted with a shorthanded goal at 5.45. Miller blocked by Saxton. This head man into the slot, popped up in the air by Kratzios on the doorstep. Dillner scrambles to get back into the, into the crease and he does. 
before any further Cornell attack can be made. And another penalty is signaled, this with 13.01 to go in the second period. Fairfield's gonna go down two players for 30 seconds. As Saxton has ruled off for a hook. Five on three for a half minute for the Big Red. Now's the chance for them to cut this Fairfield lead down to one. Cross ice pass found Brown. He shot, but Kelly tipped that puck well off its intended line. Fairfield penalty assessed to number 12, Steven Saxton. Two minutes for hooking. Time of the penalty, six minutes, 59 seconds in the second period. Saxton, two for hooking at 6.59. The Cullen penalty has been killed. And there's another shorthanded goal. The hats fly for Vinny Spaziante. And it's now 5-1. It starts in the D zone. Cullen hits Spaziante, and he goes where Mama hid the cookies from 35 feet. The Stags in beast mode. And Vincent Spaziante making a strong case. For first star of the game as Owen LeCourcier. Gives the Stags Just six seconds later, yet another shorthanded goal. Fairfield's fifth goal, third of the game for number 21, Vincent Spaziante, assisted by number 14, Brendan Cullen. Time of the shorthanded goal, seven minutes, 37 seconds in the second period. Spaziante's third from Cullen at 7.37. Fairfield's sixth goal, first of the game for number eight, Owen LaCourcière. Assisted by number 18, Luca Mondato. Time of the shorthanded goal, seven minutes, 43 seconds in the second period. LaCourcière from Mondato at 7.43. Fairfield penalty, assessed to number eight, Owen LaCourcière. Two minutes for cross-checking. Time of the penalty, eight minutes, nine seconds in the second period. La Courcière, two for cross-checking at 8.09. So plenty in terms of public address announcements to catch the first arena faithful up on. Two rapid fire shorthanded goals separated by just six seconds. And there a power play goal. Brings Cornell
back within four. Plenty happening in front. Beautiful net front feed. We couldn't quite see who was down in front. But in any case, the Big Red finally strike on the power play and they've still got just under a minute with a man advantage as that goal came during a five on three. Allen to Dysart, around the Cobb at the point. Centering pass, one timer from Allen and a congested slot was botched. Long shot in off the back glass from Padmanabhan. Cobb recovers, leaves the puck to Allen, Manjakapre, and Zach Lee offering the defensive pressure, and Lee slams this puck clear. From deep in his own zone. Cornell goal, his second of the game, scored by number eight, Robert Dysart. Assisted by number 11, Dennis Brown. And number 19, Alex Allen. Time of the power play goal, eight minutes, 52 seconds in the second period. Dysart second from Brown and Allen at 8.52. And that brings us to the midpoint of the game. Here at First Arena. UNYCHL coverage on the Nickel City Hockey Network brought to you by 412 Communications. The new gold standard in digital media solutions. 412 Communications offers Web and graphic design, social media consultation, writing and editing services, public relations, multimedia solutions like the broadcast you're watching right now, and more. Visit 412communications.com to learn how they can help your brand build bridges with the people you serve. Nine and change to go in the second period. Fairfield with a 6-2 lead over the Cornell Big Red. Dillner comes out of the crease to cover another puck. And we've got a pause in play with 8.50 to go. Cobb worked the puck in low over Spaziante on the faceoff. Matthews clears. It's recovered by Aldrich. Worked back in up the near side. He gets a shot away from long range on neck. Dillner with the stick save on him. Good coverage net front by Spaziante after Dillner had to reset off that initial save. This is chipped off the far glass by Akins, but not out. Akins recovers. He shovels the puck off the near boards into neutral territory. It's walked forward by Brown into a one-on-one. -on -one. Brown beat Matthews, got the shot away. Dillner turned at the other side. Shots now even at 24 in this high-paced game between the Stags and the Big Red. We are 32 minutes in. It's the second half of our doubleheader on the main rink here at First Arena. Another action today, Binghamton defeated Farmingdale 5-3. And earlier, St. Bonaventure delivered an 8-2 drubbing to Ramapo.
Brosnahan gains center before rolling the puck into the Cornell zone. Partial changing of the guard for the Stags. Now they reset centering pass. Daly couldn't get the convert off the Fiol centering feed. Fiol to Lee via Brosnahan. His shot from close was disrupted by now Taggart Weiss in goal for Cornell. Now in goal for Cornell, number 50, Taggart Weiss. We had just made note of that change, although it occurred some time ago. Fiol clears the zone. Now he tips the puck forward to Owen LaCourcier, who took aim from 30 feet. And Weiss able to see that shot the whole way in. Cornell has rostered five goalies for the season. A lot of netminders. Luke Kratzios. Bodied by Lee off the puck at the near side. Zone cleared off the carom by Fairfield. Trying to change direction quickly was Friedberg to generate some space, but to no avail. Markey dropped past to Lee at the point after gaining the zone. Lee is checked off the puck in open ice by Connor Burke. And here come the Big Red, or tried to anyway. Although Lee disrupted Kratzios' advance up the near dashers right in front of the scorer's table. 5.40 to go in the second period. Fairfield has a 6-2 lead over Cornell. William Leary to Lee behind the goal. He misplayed the puck at the half wall. This is thrown toward the cage by Friedberg. Shot from up close. Bottom of the far circle and Grayson Shaw was off its line. Malalepsi sets up a two-on-two -two with Cullen. Malalepsi... Circles below the goal after being angled out of the house by Barry. This puck recovered by Bement. Leary volleys it back in from over the blue line, delayed offside for about a half second. Everybody's tagged up. Play continues on, and Burke steals the puck from the other Burke. It was Connor Burke trying to clear Brendan Burke, who maintained for Fairfield. Stags reset in the neutral zone. Puck thrown in by Vaughn from long range. Stepping up to the edge of the crease and deflecting the puck in the far corner was Weiss, not ruled a shot on goal as the trajectory was wide of the far post. Spaziante has three already. Backhand into traffic was picked clean by Friedberg and subsequently cleared. Leary botched the breakout. Bement works the half wall. Leary gets the puck back. Launches this a fair ways up ice before Evan Moore, rather before Harry Akins, recovered at his own blue line for Cornell. Akins hassled by the four-checking Momro. Gave the puck away. Pita Kelly shot. Easy save, and Spaziante's got himself four. He kicks the convert off the rebound, and it's now 7-2 Fairfield. Here it comes again. There's the takeaway. The initial shot from Pete to Kelly saved, and Spaziante takes home the trash net front, 16.06. Into the third period, into the second period, it's now a 7-2 hockey game. And a trip is signaled with 3.44 to go. It will be Aiden Cobb. Heading off to 16 seconds after the Fairfield goal.
Fairfield goal, his fourth of the game, scored by number 21, Vincent Spaziante. Assisted by number 97, Michael Pita Kelly. Time of the goal, 16 minutes and six seconds in the second period. Spaziante's fourth from Pita Kelly at 16.06. Cornell penalty, assessed to number 13, Aiden Cobb, two minutes for tripping. Time of the penalty, 16 minutes, 16 seconds in the second period. Cobb, two for tripping at 16-16. Yeah. And Daly scores a power play goal. Matthews with the headman pass. And it's now 8 2. Stags pulling away steadily. Scoring correction on Fairfield's seventh goal, add an assist to number 93, Connor Momro. So the summary for Fairfield's seventh goal reads Spaziante from Pete to Kelly and Momro at 16.06. Fairfield goal, his first of the game, scored by number 61, Cameron Daly. Assisted by number 24, Jeffrey Matthews. And number three, Devin Kelly. Time of the power play goal, 17 minutes, 15 seconds in the second period. Daly from Matthews and Kelly at 17-15, a power play goal. We've made it to the final 100 seconds of period number two. This all Fairfield, LaCourcier off the centering as from Lee, denied by Weiss. Lee bodied hard from behind the play. This a delayed penalty against Cornell. Bement touches up. And the Big Red are going back on the penalty kill. Head contact the call on Barry. And it's power play time again. For the Stacks. Cornell penalty assessed to number 24, Franklin Berry. Two minutes for head contact. Time of the penalty, 18 minutes, 44 seconds in the second period. Berry, two for head contact at 18, 44. One minute remaining in the period. Un minute restant dans la période. Kid Devon, long shot. This tipped up in the air. Weiss, unable to freeze the puck as it Bounce back off the end boards. Another wide shot, cleared out by Wang. 37 seconds remaining. Alvarez bulldozed his way into neutral territory, but Burke and Cullen come in together. Centering pass from Burke to Cullen resulted in a wayward shot. Zone is cleared. Vaughn recovers. In comes Cullen again. He sets up Kidd, final 15 seconds. Centering pass, Malalepsi. Shot steered behind the goal by Weiss's left toe. Final five. 
Kid to Vaughn. Last chance. Shot in close. Covered up as the horn sounds by Taggart Weiss. And that will do it for the second period. The score through two periods. Fairfield University Stags 8, Cornell Big Red 2. We'll be back on the Nickel City Hockey Network after the intermission.
Nickel City Hockey Network coverage of the Invitational at Elmira is brought to you by Militello Realty. The Hampton Inn in Ithaca, New York. The Upstate New York Collegiate Hockey League. Envious Gameware. 412 Communications. The Battaglia Marciano Agency. New York's leading dealer of new and pre-owned cars, West Her. Event sponsor, the Elmira Tea and Coffee House, located one block from First Arena on West Water Street. And the Nickel City Hockey Network's presenting sponsor, Buffalo Golf and Social. Western New York's leading year-round indoor golf practice facility. We'll be back with the third period in just a couple minutes on the Nickel City Hockey Network. It's time for the third period. Let's head back upstairs to James Witherite. Third period action about to get underway from First Arena in Elmira, New York. The Fairfield Stags with a powerful second period. Bolted away to an 8-2 lead. Over the Cornell Big Red. Fairfield on the power play for 35 seconds left to start this third. Fairfield in their home black sweaters moving right to left. With Cornell in their away whites. Traveling from left to right here in the third period. James Witherite flying solo on the air for the Nickel City Hockey Network in this seventh of 12 games all weekend long from First Arena in the UNYCHL Invitational at Elmira Showcase. Leary tries to set up Pete to Kelly on the doorstep, but could not connect with him. Of course, the driving force so far today, Vincent Spaziante. with four goals. For the Stags. Attacking zone draw coming up for Fairfield. Zach Field coming in to take it. But that chance for a ninth was squandered. And Weinstein clears. In comes Brosnahan to Daly. Two on two. Drop pass to Feel. Vaughn protecting. Gets a shot away from long range right into the pads of Weiss. 35th Fairfield shot. Kidd turns with 36. Brosnahan with 37. Both right into the pads of Weiss again. 38th shot comes from close up. Zach Feel surrounded by white sweaters. Denied on the welcome mat by Weiss. Daly sets up Fiol again, redirect, crashing the net was wide. 
This is pushed up the far boards. By Benko, centered to Brown. Now Cobb will join his line mates, Brown and Miller. Meanwhile, LeCourcier sets up Kidd in the near corner. Kidd fires a cross ice pass to Manja Capre. Long shot was blocked. Doors open for a breakaway. Alex Allen crashing in. Deeks scores off his backhand. It is now 8-3. Alex Allen, double deke net front goes backhand, stick side. Two twenty one into the third period to bring the big red back within five. He had an assist on Dysart's first goal of the game. Alex Allen now tickles the twine himself to give Cornell their third. First big red shot of the period too. Cornell goal, his first of the game, scored by number 19, Alex Allen. Time of the unassisted goal, two minutes, 21 seconds in the third period. Allen unassisted at 2.21. Three and a half minutes gone in the third. In comes Malalepsi, centering pass, Cullen stick lifted. Burke tied him up, and he's going to go for a hook. Hooking the call, 334. Into the third. And the power play begins with Kelly taking aim from close range, getting the puck back. It cycled to Matthews, high in the zone. It comes back to him from Cullen. Through the slot, this shot from Matthews tipped off line, caught and held by Weiss. Cornell penalty was assessed to number 27, Connor Burke. Two minutes for hooking. Time of the penalty, three minutes and 34 seconds in the third period. Burke, two for hooking at 3.34. Cullen runs the gauntlet below the goal, leaves the puck to Zach Lee. Back to Cullen it comes, they play keep away far side and now trade places. Cullen options to Lee. Pass intended for Burke was knocked offline by the reaching stick of Bradley Wang. It comes back to Cullen up top. Lee looks slapper, floats it in close, crashes the net, Lee does. On the give and go from Burke, shot rings off the crossbar. Burke to Manja Capre, working the left point as we work our way to the five minute mark of the third period. Cullen at the top of the far circle. Steadies, he looks slapper momentarily. Cross ice feed Manja Capre's shot blocked by Aikens at the near circle. Burke again to Cullen. The puck movement's been good. But the Cornell defense, fortified to start this third period, has been blocking quite a few shots. Lee's chance at the top of the far circle. Stick checked offline. Malalepsi, a poke check away from him, but turning that into a one-timer was Burke. It was off its target ultimately, and the Malalepsi shot that followed ends up in Weiss's glove for a pause in play with 14 minutes, 37 seconds to go in the third period. 
Fairfield up 8-3 over Cornell. And an attacking zone faceoff coming for Michael Pizza Kelly. At the near circle. Vaughn at the opposite point rolls the puck in low. It's backhanded. Away by Miller. Momro was the pursuer in close. The remainder of the penalty was killed off cleanly. Kidd chips the puck up the near board. Spaziante and Momro in a two on two. The Spaziante shot was deflected in toward Weiss that the 41st Fairfield shot on goal today. Pete Kelly dropped pass to Momro. He absorbs an open ice check from Allen that takes him off the puck. One on one the other direction. Miller angled by Vaughn to the corner, checked into the corner boards, and Spaziante tips this puck over his own blue line, ahead to Pizza Kelly, who easily won the race to the corner. Centering pass, Kidd with space, couldn't connect. The rebound, no, it was under Taggart Weiss, who comes up for the pause and play. Let's see that again. Great chance here for Kidd, rang it off the crossbar, and the puck ended up under Taggart Weiss. For a pause in the action. Faceoff comes in front of us. Alvarez gets cautioned. Scrum develops over the dot. Zach Feel back on his feet after losing the draw. And Kratzios sends a cross ice pass. Long up ice in the direction of Weinstein, but he couldn't chase the puck down before Leary got a stick on it. Here's Jack Brosnahan. He centers. Daly couldn't corral the puck in a congested slot, and it's carried up the other way. Now by Kratzios off a feed from Weinstein. Kratzios driven into the backboards in front of the ice resurfacer entrance. Fiol plays the body. Leary couldn't emerge with the puck. It's thrown in by Alvarez from up close. It trickled through the blue paint out the near side where Brosnahan absorbing a shoulder check on the near glass clears. Akins to Wiener behind the Cornell goal. This puck thrown up ice. Markey blocks it down, re-enters. He's outnumbered. He leaves it back to Le Corsier, stepping up for a shot at the top of the left circle. That chance deflected into the glass by Weiss off his pads. Here's Kelly, fed the puck, shot blocked. It was Zach Wiener disrupting that Kelly chance. And here's a one-on-one -on -one the other direction for Cornell. Over skating the puck, one too many stick handles was Brown. The Stags clear no icing as we work our way to the eight minute mark of the third period. Fairfield with an 8-3 lead over Cornell. Trying to give the Empire Conference their first win of the weekend. The first half has been a clean sweep for the upstate New York Collegiate Hockey League. Commotion behind the goal. Dysart's got two. Cobb set him up. Dysart tried to center to Brown. Back to Cobb it goes. Couldn't corral the pass. And Markey clears. Dysart rolls the puck in behind the Fairfield goal. Time for a Cornell change. And Brendan Burke up the middle. Comes crashing into Cornell territory. Shot was off the toe of his stick. Sailed wide. Malalepsi brings down a loose puck. Cullen got a stick on it, but couldn't gain control. Cullen's entry is clean up the right side. Burke, shot from 40 feet, rolls off the corner glass to Mark Vaughn at the near corner. 
This is pushed up by Miller along the near wall. Back inside the Fairfield blue line. In comes Alex Allen, two on two. Heading for the net was Shaw, but the puck ends up below the goal. Shaw offering support. Shot from Miller, who's dropped back on D. Made it through, but Eric Dillner again records a save. Play halted with a tripping penalty signaled with nine minutes and 52 seconds to go in the proceedings. And it's going to go against Connor Burke. Face off coming to Weiss's left. Cornell penalty assessed to number 27, Connor Burke. Two minutes for tripping. Time of the penalty, 10 minutes, eight seconds in the third period. Burke, two for tripping at 10.08. Momro through traffic, split defenders, lost the puck in the slot as Alvarez caught up to him. Kratzios has a one-on-one, -on -one. the reaching stick of Devin Kelly sends the puck to the far corner and Kelly recovers for the Stags. 35 seconds killed off this Cornell penalty. Stags starting to apply the brakes midway through the third period. They're up 8-3, comfortable five-goal lead. Spaziante looking for one for the thumb. Threw the puck into the slot, Alvarez intercepted, and this is cleared up the far side by Wang. Weinstein absorbs a hip check from Momro, who emerges with the puck just inside his own blue line. Stretch pass evades Jack Brosnahan. Here up the middle, now comes Kidd. He tried to hit Daly with a cross ice pass. Feel offering good puck support. Circles below the goal now. Tried to get a shot away from inside the dot near his side, but Miller sacrificed the body to make the block. Leary and Bement collide, both battling for the biscuit. This cleared again with eight minutes and change to go. 15 seconds on the Fairfield power play. And Chris Manchicapre will start it up the left side. He accelerates in over the Cornell line. Manchicapre wrapping around, no options there. He connects with Daly at the top of the slot. Shot was blocked up in the air and offline. And this is cleared into the netting and out of play. Off the stick of Max Miller with 7.46 to go in regulation. For your next trip to the Finger Lakes, the Hampton Inn Ithaca is the smart choice for your stay, whether you're visiting kids at college, in town for business, or just passing through. Enjoy all the wonders of the Finger Lakes and Ithaca areas and leave the rest of the staff at the Hampton Inn. 337 Elmira Road, centrally located between Cornell University and Ithaca College and not far from downtown Ithaca. 607-277-5500. Mandato and Dysart met for the neutral zone faceoff just above the Cornell line as that puck out of play was ultimately deemed off a Fairfield stick, so they lose the territorial advantage. Two on one. Cobb shooting off the setup from Brown clearing the crossbar. Dysart challenged by Leary in the far corner. Couldn't maintain the puck. Cobb recovers. Padmanabon to Cobb. Looking shot in a congested slot area. A poke check from Markey. Takes away his chance. Cobb let one go finally from the left point. Into the pads of Eric Dillner. And this will come back and icing. 7.05 to go. Fairfield with an 8-3 advantage. And the faceoff's going to be spotted to Dillner's left.
It was Benko in for the draw for the big red. Here he backhands the puck to the top of the crease. Allen was pushed to within th er, to outside 30 feet from the goal before he was able to get a shot away. And that shot, too, was intercepted. Markey to Kelly. Pass evades Kelly. Wiener can't clear. Here he tips the puck beyond the reach of Le Courcier, who briefly protected the left point. This wristed out by Vaughn, icing waved off. The lines person said the puck was tipped. Malalepsi failed to backhand the puck beyond the reach of Weiss. Kelly holds the point with 6.15 to go in this 8-3 Fairfield lead. Cullen surrounded at the point, finds Kelly. A poke check from Franklin Berry nearly clears the zone. Burke comes back in, shot bothered by an Allen stick check. Vaughn's chance from deeper made it through traffic and was blocked down by Weiss. Vaughn to Kelly, to Burke in the high slot. He turned, he shot, but it was knocked down in traffic. And this will be an icing. against Cornell with five and a half minutes to go. Thereabouts. Spaziante, he's got four goals and an assist already. In to take the draw. Matthews holding the point. Pizza Kelly got a shot away from the dot. It was steered wide by Weiss again. 45 Fairfield shots on goal. Momro paves away to the house, gets a shot through, but it was steered wide. Stick on stick contact from Shaw, the disrupting factor. Centering pass. Shaw on the doorstep, canceled out by the back, checking Zach Lee off the feed from Allen. Lee coast to coast, drop pass, shot from Momro, skied into the back glass. Final four minutes and 36 seconds. Here at First Arena, Fairfield looking to give the Empire Conference their first win of the, of the weekend. And they've got a handy 8-3 lead over Cornell to this point. We'll see what's issued here. Play halted pretty quickly. Matching cross-checking minors. Issued 15-35 into the third period, so we're going four on four. Play resumes quickly to the right of Taggart Weiss. Cornell penalty assessed to number 25, Turner Aldrich. Two minutes for cross checking. Fairfield penalty assessed to number 21, Vincent Spaziante. Two minutes for cross checking. Time of the penalties. 15 minutes, 35 seconds in the third period. Aldrich and Spaziante, two each for cross-checking at 15.35. Padmanabhan could not clear the zone cleanly. Miller carried it over the line. Here he is taking aim, but angled by Kidd outside the house. His shot sailed just wide of the near post. Markey couldn't control the cross-ice breakout pass from Saxton. 
A close-up chance from Weinstein. Foiled by Eric Dillner, recording save number 26 of the afternoon. 3.08 to go, 43 seconds left on the four on four. The kid shot the other direction. Sticked by Weiss into the near corner after it took an awkward bounce in close. This is Brown, but he's outnumbered on his way into the Fairfield zone. The reaching stick of Vaughn sends him into the near corner. And then the check from Markey finishes the turnover. La Courciere winding up. Shot popped up in the air by the outstretched left leg of Weiss. In the other direction, plenty of commotion in front of Dillner coming up with a couple saves, denying Brown and then Kratzios after that. The cross-checking miners have expired. Vincent Spaziante working below the goal. He and Aldrich get tied up again. They separate this time round. Cross-ice feed, Manja Capre's shot was deflected up into the netting. Daly trying to establish net front position, couldn't. Manja Capre this time got Wang with a shot from long range. Zone barely held, Daly kept it in only just. Spaziante. Angled below the goal, gets a shove from Wang away from the puck, and it's taken away by Akins, but not cleared. Spaziante, he's been all over the place, holds the zone, punches it into the far corner. He heads off for a change. Final minute and a half from First Arena. Daly on the doorstep. And feel with the tap-in. Makes this 9-3. Fairfield. The icing on the cake for the Stags. Particulars forthcoming. Brosnahan tries to muscle beyond the reach of Wiener, but is ultimately separated from the puck. One minute remaining in the period. In minute restant dans la période. Fairfield goal, scored by number nine, Zach Thiel, assisted by number 61, Cam Daly, and number 58, Chris Manchicapre. Time of the goal, 18 minutes, 38 seconds in the third period. Thiel from Daly and Manchicapre at 18.38. Final half minute of the game upon us. Shaw, surrounded by Stags, couldn't get a shot away cleanly. Rabin does, but her chance from just above the dot ended up right in Dillner's pads. Final 10 seconds. Rabin gives the puck away. A shoulder check from Friedberg, stymies Burke at center. And the final kitchen buzzer sounds to signal the end of a 9-3 Fairfield win. Today's final score, Fairfield University Stags 9. Cornell University Big Red 3. It's time for the three stars of the game. Today's third star with 28 saves. For Fairfield, number one, Eric Dillner. Today's second star with a goal and two assists for the Fairfield Stags, number 97, Michael Pitakelli. And today's number one star, leading the way for the Stags with four goals and an assist, number 21, Vincent Spaziante.
That will do it for us here on the Nickel City Hockey Network from the main rink at First Arena on this Saturday afternoon. Invitational at Elmira coverage continues tomorrow with a full slate of games. And we certainly hope you can join us both on the Nickel City Hockey Network and 412 Communications. For the entire Nickel City crew, Aaron Alper and Sean McHugh. And everybody behind the scenes who makes it happen for our videography assistance from the Stags <laughs> Reserves. James Witherite, thanking you for your company today. Thank you. And we certainly hope to see you all again soon. Good night from Elmira.